the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We present for your enjoyment, Chan Du, the magician. Before our drama starts, we would like to ask you a question. Had you noticed, perhaps, how difficult it was to buy White King in the years we've just passed through? Other kinds of soaps on grocer's shelves, often in abundance, but seemingly so little White King. Well, White King is made largely from precious nut and vegetable oils. These were scarce. We could not begin to fill demand for our soap, and we would not sacrifice quality. The ladies who are our customers are intelligent people. And so when a package of White King did appear on a grocer's shelf, it was quickly bought and taken home and treasured, as perhaps no other soap has ever been. Maybe you haven't tried this different kind of soap. It will do so much of your work for you that you too will say, I love White King soap. Princess Naji, the strangely beautiful woman who, 12 years ago, was responsible for Frank Chandler's first visit to the yogi in India, contrives to reach the malevolent Raksor with a message. When he calls at her Cairo home, she tells him she no longer wishes to work with Chandler, but instead with him. Hinting at her possession of the evil secrets of black magic, she convinces Raksor she can be of great service. Later, at the hotel on the edge of the desert, she shows Chandler and Dorothy an ancient parchment on which is drawn the plan of the long-lost tunnel linking the Great Pyramid with the Sphinx. There, she insists, Robert Regent may be found. Together, Naji and Chandler call upon all their occult knowledge to find the tunnel's entrance. Chandu, the magician. <laughs> the doorway to the living path. Nothing. Still nothing. Blackness, like a great curtain. Why should I fail in this? Chandu... Nazi! Listen, Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank, we have something to tell you. Did you see it, Nazi? Yes, Chandu. Just before Bob and Betty... Where was it? I didn't see a thing. In a temple. Hey, what is this, Uncle Frank? You all look so funny. Well, don't you want to hear what we have to tell you? It's terrific. Oh, not now, Betty. Oh. Frank, do you really think you can find a way in there? In where, Mom? I bet I know. It's something about Uncle Frank's magic. And Nodgy's, too, this time. And we didn't see it. Oh, gee. It scares me. But I love it anyway. What was it, Uncle Frank? What did you see? And what's that roll of paper on the table? You found Dad's drawing. No, no. Do not touch the parchment, Bob. Nor Betty. It is not for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Naji. Yes, we don't mean to snoop. Oh, you misunderstand, and I cannot explain. Well, that's all right. Mom, what's the matter with Uncle Frank? He looks like he's a thousand miles away. Not at all, Bob. I was just thinking... Of what we must do? Yes. We'll go there. All but you, Naji. You will go to that place without me? We must. We'll hire a guide, as tourists do, and go on the customary visit to the Sphinx. The Sphinx? Oh, I've been dying to go up and take some pictures of it. We only got to see the back of the Pez the other day. That's just what you can do, Betty. I only hope the sand's been cleared away from it. The sand wouldn't drift over the Sphinx in a couple of days, would it? Well, I don't mean that, Bob. There's an ancient temple under the Sphinx. And every year the sand drifts in and fills it, so it has to be excavated again. It has been done, Chandu. Even if it has. If that tunnel is connected with the Great Pyramid, couldn't we get in from there? With tourists climbing in and out all day? We'd never know when a party of tourists would arrive. It's the first place they go, Dorothy, when they reach Cairo. Well, you can't blame them, Uncle Frank. I don't, Betty. At any rate, the entrance we saw is at the other end, in that temple. Look, couldn't you let us in on this? We will, Bob. Up to a point. Now, Jane... You must wait at the hotel until you hear from us. Do you believe Roxor will become suspicious? You know he would, Najee, if he knows about the tunnel and saw you there with us. I can't let you risk it. Suppose I should say to him, 
that I was only learning whether you knew of the tunnel, Chandu. For Pete's sake, have you found rocks or... No wonder you looked funny when we came in. Bob, we didn't tell them. Please, Betty. In a few minutes, dear. Uh, Chandu, I could perhaps... No, go... no, not Jane. I'll drive you into Cairo and bring back a guide. Uh, as you say. But you will allow me to suggest a man. Ali El Gabri. Splendid. He is not Arabic. He is Egyptian. You said that as if it were unusual, Naji. Of course, you do not know, Dorothy. The Egyptian guides are as proud of their pure blood as if they were kings. Yes, Dot. The Egyptian guides and their families even live in a village all of their own. It's not far from here, as a matter of fact. But if this whole thing is to be kept secret, what about the guide? I mean, if you do find the entrance to the tunnel. Sworn to me by the oath of time. It is said his family were servants of mine before the years of the pharaohs. Golly, everything in Egypt is so old. But then that's what makes it so fascinating. Listen, Betty. You too, Bob. Naji thinks your father may be in the tunnel we're talking about. Oh, no, he isn't. That's just what we were trying to tell you. Dad's in Cairo. What on earth makes you think that? Well, when, when we were sitting down there on the terrace, after Naji came up here, a man came up to us and told us. An Arab? Yeah, sure. He said he had a message for you, Uncle Frank. Bob said he'd go up and get you, but he wouldn't let him. He looked scared to death, didn't he, Bob? Oh, you should have seen him. He kept looking over his shoulder like... Oh, what was the message, Bob? Well, he said to tell you this. The one you seek is in the Suk El Nahasin. Yes, he did, Uncle Frank. We said it over two or three times, so we'd be sure to get it right. Do you know where that is? It means the bazaar of the coppersmiths, Betty. It cannot be so, Chandu. It sounds a lot more reasonable to me than to think he'd been in a tunnel nobody's been able to find for thousands of years. Is that why we're going out to the Sphinx, for Pete's sake? Do not allow this message to turn you aside, Chandu. I'll have to look into it, Nazi. If it's not true, we'll still have time to go to the tunnel. It won't be dark for a couple of hours. But you may be walking into a trap. You know, this isn't like you, Nazi. To be afraid. <sighs> I'm sorry, Chandu. Shall we go now? Yes. The rest of you be ready to leave when I come back with the guide. The Sphinx. I can hardly wait. Imagine walking in here right under the Sphinx's chin. It's a funny kind of temple, though. Just, just a lot of pillars and rows. Oh, look up there. It doesn't look as if there ever was a roof. Well, there probably wasn't, Bob. Golly can tell you all about it. The temple was built for the worship of Horus, the sun god. You wonder how they could lift those big blocks of stone to put up the walls. No machinery or anything. Oh, look over here at these funny carved pictures. Frank, wait a minute. Uh, go with him, Molly. I wa effendi. What is it, Dad? Who was the man in the bazaar? Or was there anyone? Yes, he'd been there all right. I missed him. I don't have to tell you, it probably wasn't Robin. Probably? Why don't you tell me the truth? You and Naji know something about Robert now, don't you? No. No, I give you my word, Dot. Look here. Are you still thinking Bob may have been right the night we went through Robert's things? It's the only thing that makes any sense. He could have been injured when the ship sank. And people do have amnesia. You see it in the papers all the time. Do you realize what you're doing, Dot? What do you mean? You're trying to put off my finding the entrance to the tunnel. Do you realize that? No, but I... You can face it, Dot. You said yourself you wanted to know the truth, no matter what it is. Yes, but now that we may meet Robert in a few minutes, and he may be... Don't, Dot. Just believe that when the time comes, we'll find him. And when it does, you'll know what to do. Oh, I hope so. All right now. Yes, Frank. Now, the entrance to the tunnel must be under the wall there. Now, let's see. The third pillar. That's this one. If there's a stairway under the floor, it should sound hollow. No. No, or it would have been discovered years ago. What about these wall carvings, though? Dolly said this was the temple of the sun god. And this is the figure of Horus. So, what if the secret is in the hand of Horus? And I press... Oh, 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 oh,
hope you almost fell right through the floor. Oh, you're shaking all over. Oh. It's all right, dear. I... Oh, I felt the stone begin to slip, and luckily I stepped off of it. Oh, I'm not hurt, darling, really. The stone slides down to make the top step of a stairway. Oh. All these centuries. And the mechanism works as if it had been built yesterday. But if Naji's right, it has been in use, Frank. You have found it, old Chandu. The legend of my master's people has come to pass. How dark and awful it looks down there. You're not going into it, Betty. Ali, quick now. Take Bob and Betty back to the hotel. See that they're inside before you leave them. Oh, Uncle Frank. I'm a great FND. Not even the priests of the temple were more powerful. Yeah, and if you knew how we found out the entrance, you really fall on your face, Allie. Listen. Listen. There's someone walking in the sand up there. Listen. What if there is? We'll have to take them with us, Dad. You don't think rocks are... Oh, one there? of his men. We don't want anyone to know we found the stairway. I'll go first. And listen to me, Allie. I... I am also to come down into the place of darkness? No, no, you wait here. When we're inside, press on the carving there. You see it, Ollie? The hand of Horus. That's it. The stone will move back in place. Don't leave this spot for anything until we come out. Unless... But it might not open from the inside. I know that. Ollie, if we're not out of here in half an hour, open the entrance in the same way. Do you understand? I wa. It shall be as you say. Fine. Come on. bottom of the steps. Wait until Ali closes the entrance. The place of darkness. There's something evil here. Robert couldn't be in a place like this. Robert! Robert! Before we bring to a close our drama this evening, may I say something to the ladies on the subject of hands? There is an extra special quality in White King soap that is extra specially kind to hands. And I'll tell you what it is. If you use the kind of soap that needs hot, hot water to make it work, your hands are likely to be rough and red no matter what kind of soap it is or what claims are made for it or what it contains. But listen, White King, with its nut and vegetable oils, doesn't need hot water. In washing machine or dishpan, for heavy clothes or filmy, fragile things, White King washes the dirt away in water that's just about body temperature. Ever hear of anything like that? No wonder millions and millions of ladies say, I love White King Soap. That's what you'll say, too. Chandu the Magician is produced and directed by Cyril Armbrister. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. <laughs> This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Chan Tzu, the magician. Ladies and gentlemen, we present for your enjoyment Chan Du, the magician. And before our drama begins, we would like to suggest that probably you will like White King better than any other soap you have ever used. If you have a washing machine, listen. Get some White King from your grocer. Put some in your washer. Not so much, mind you, as the soap you've been using. Put in your clothes. Put in the water, but not so hot as the water you thought you had to have to get things clean. Then, 
turn on the power, run your wash through, and just see with your own eyes what happened. We try to make this radio drama thrilling, but honestly, what a thrill you'll have when you see clothes washed with this different kind of soap. Save on your soap bill, save on your gas bill, save on your clothes bill. You'll say, I love White King granulated soap. In Egypt, Frank Chandler and Princess Naji have made use of their occult powers to discover the concealed entrance to a long-lost tunnel leading from the Sphinx to the Great Pyramid. Leaving Ali, the Egyptian guide sent by Naji, Chandler and the regents walk down the stone stairs into darkness. Behind them, Ali closes the entrance and waits. Chandu, the magician. The place of darkness. Oh, there's something evil here. Robert couldn't be in a place like this. Robert! 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 What was that? It's just an echo, Betty. Well, it sure didn't sound like it. Well, you all have flashlights. Turn them on. Okay. Frank! What's that? It's an altar, Dorothy. A pagan altar of sacrifice. No wonder you think there's an atmosphere of evil here. No, no, above it. There in the wall. Oh, it's just a statue, Mom. But Uncle Frank, look. The figure of a priestess of black magic. It's Naji. Oh, yes, it is. You know it can't be. It is Naji. It sure is. Come now, pull yourselves together. Look at it. It's nothing but a figure carved out of alabaster. With painted features. It does look like Naji. Her eyes. Don't say that, Betty. It looks as Naji might if she... Dorothy, this figure represents a woman who was the personification of all evil. The lamp she's holding in her hands is the highest symbol of black magic. She looks so real. She was, five or six thousand years ago. Beautiful and as deadly as a cobra. But look here. Maybe she was Naji's ancestor. You know she sent no. her people... Now come along. We're going through every foot of this place and we'll need all the time we have. What makes him act so funny? Gee, I don't know. We didn't do anything to make him sore. Well, come on. He said to come with him. Hey, wait for us, Uncle Frank. Yeah, so she looks so real. So lifelike. As if she might speak to me. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Learn the path of wisdom. Know thou this. 
A thousand years today. What do you mean? Tomorrow will open for thee a door upon the way to knowledge. Grow yet another death. Another death? Tell him, where are you? Another death. Tell him. Is he dead after all? Tell him. Repeat what I have said. Tomorrow will open for thee a door. Why did I leave you here alone? Dorothy! Upon the way to knowledge. Upon the way to knowledge. What are you saying, Dot? Through yet another death. What's the matter? Who is Mother talking to? Through yet another death. Mom, what are you talking about? Thou art free to go, but thou wilt never forget. I will never forget you. Forget who? Don't stand there staring at that figure, Dot. Don't look at it. Mother, darling, don't look like that. Here, give me your flashlight. There. You can't see her now. It's all right. Oh. You look just like you were hypnotized or something, Mother. We can go now. Robert isn't here. We know that, Dot. There's nobody here. Nadia was mistaken. Oh, no. She told me Robert was dead. I should never have brought you here. She said, if in a thousand yesterdays thou hast not learned the path to wisdom. I wonder what she meant. You couldn't possibly have heard anyone say that. What does it mean? Don't ask questions, Bob. Take her other arm. But she said it, Frank. No one could have said it to you, Dorothy. It's a quotation from ancient Sanskrit. Well, I heard her. The lamp was lighted and Stop I it, heard... Stop it, Bob. Stop it. I'm going to get you back to the hotel and then... You're all right now, aren't you, Mother? You're in your own room and everything. See? Yes, darling, I see. Uh, look here, Betty. You and Bob go downstairs and get some magazines or something to read. I want to talk to your mother alone. Okay, whatever you say. Come on, Beth. All right. I'll close this one, too. Frank, I'm perfectly willing to listen to you, but I know what Naji said. It couldn't possibly have been Naji. She couldn't have gone into the temple, the tunnel ahead of us. Call it the temple. I know now it is. You must put that experience out of your mind, Dorothy. As you would a nightmare. Oh, telephones and black magic, five minutes apart. Hello? Chandu, you have come back. Did you find him? Oh, Najee. No, we didn't. But uh, just a moment, I want Dorothy to speak to you. Oh, no. Yes. Where are you, Najee? At my home. When you did not call me, I began to hope you had found him. I meant to call you, and I told Ollie to tell you we'd come back. Dot him. Talk to him. Oh, all right, Frank. Hello, Najee. Dorothy? Something is very wrong. What is it? That's a dreadful place down there, isn't it? You know I have not been inside the tunnel. Dorothy, what did you find there? Oh, I can't talk to her, Frank. I'll call you, Nadia, or come to see you in the morning. Tell me what you saw there, Chandu. Not Roxor. It was much more unpleasant than Roxor. Oh. And we needn't worry about his going into the tunnel. He never will. You are troubled, and I must not keep Good night, Nadine. Don't you see how impossible it is, Dot? She's been right there at home all the time. You aren't fooling me at all, you know. What do you mean? I didn't just imagine all that. You're treating me like a child. And you know Nadine isn't a priestess of black magic? Well, you didn't hear her in that awful place. You said yourself her eyes were like Nadine's. <laughs> it was an alabaster figure, not a woman. Even her voice reminded me of Nadine's. You didn't hear it. You don't know. I didn't hear it. But I know. What? I've seen it happen to other people. You let yourself be influenced by the atmosphere of the place. And what you've heard of it. I didn't just let myself... Yes, you did not. Nothing can affect your mind unless you give in to it. You stood there staring at the figure from the moment you saw it. There was something fascinating about it. Of course there was. It re it's resemblance to Nadia, for one thing. I should have realized what it might do to you. You do believe I heard her. Or thought you did. You were thinking of finding Robert. And at that moment, you'd have listened to, well... Say it. The powers of darkness themselves. Yes, I would. 
Only when she spoke, I, I knew I couldn't bear to hear anything about him from her. And then I couldn't get away. Don't, Dot. Oh. You are away. It's all over. I wish I could believe it. All right. I will. I suppose I'll never know why I suddenly began quoting ancient Sanskrit to you. I hope not. Thou hast delivered thyself into the hands of the powers of darkness. Frank, you knew all the time this was more than just my imagination. Remember. You mean you hear her speaking to you now? Of course I do. She said I would. She said once I'd looked into that lamp in her hand. Dorothy, her. you didn't. Why? What difference did that make? There's only one way out of it now. Thank heaven I know it. Stay here, Doc. Remember. Don't just go away and leave me with this awful thing hanging over me. I'll be right out here. But whatever she says to you, Dorothy, whatever you hear, don't go out of that room. The black secrets of ancient Egypt are more powerful than all he knows. Where are you? Where are you? Here before you. Take the knife from the table. What knife? There. It is well. You are no longer Dorothy Regent, the wife who seeks her husband, the mother who loves her children. You are one with us. Come. I can't. He said, my brother told me. To... I tell you to come. Now when I give the word... Oh, Uncle Frank. He left the crystal ball on the table and... Mom, for Pete's sake, what are you doing with that knife? Take it quick and go out and lock the door. Take it. <laughs> drama has come to a close until tomorrow night. But there's drama and maybe magic in millions of homes where White King soap is used. Once upon a time, people thought they should buy two or three kinds of soap. One for washing machine and dishpan, maybe one or two for dainty things like lingerie and stockings. But more and more people discovered White King. The one and only one soap you ever need. No matter who you are, where you live, or what you have to wash. Your husband may be an engineer, or he may work in a bank. You may have sheets and pillowcases no end to wash, or you may live in a hotel with no laundering problem other than your nylons. Listen to these wonderful words. White King gets out the stubbornest dirt. White King protects as with a caress the daintiest fabrics. Know what you'll say? Do you? You'll say this. I love White King. Chandu the Magician is based on the original radio drama created by Harry A. Earnshaw. Musical effect by Carla Pondit. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu, the magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Would you like a shout out? Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me who you want to shout out to, who you want to shout out from, and we'll get it up here for you. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. you got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think, and we'll see you next time.